Buyback announcements reached a new record of $1.22 trillion last year. They're already on pace to top that high in 2023. That's according to data by EPFR Trim Tabs. Among the most recent companies to make such announcements is tech giant Alphabet. We just talked about it, looking at a $70 billion stock buyback authorization. However, with companies pouring in on repurchasing shares comes a split view between buyback critics and supporters. Here to discuss is Cornell University Assistant Professor Nick Guest. And um, here, we're not talking about opinion on buybacks. We're talking about data that you looked at, Nick, as to whether buybacks benefit companies over the longer term. What did you find? So, uh, of course, there are several criticisms of buybacks, including that uh, they're due to companies trying to manipulate their share price upwards. Uh, some people argue that they're associated with excessive executive compensation and that companies that buy back don't have as much cash uh, available to take advantage of investment opportunities, thereby sacrificing growth and sacrificing ultimately profitability. But our evidence comparing both companies that repurchased and companies that don't repurchase shares uh, didn't find any large scale on average evidence of, of any of those things. Of course, there are rare instances of companies abusing buybacks, but uh, whether a company repurchases a large or small amount, whether they repurchase frequently or infrequently, we didn't find short term price bumps followed by poor long term performance. We didn't find excessive executive education, no sacrificing of investment opportunities. So the firms that repurchase, they tend to be profitable and, and invest steadily. Uh, so that's our, our main takeaway that, of course, conflicts with the major criticisms uh, for the majority of firms. On the flip side, did you find any sort of long-term benefit from doing the buybacks? There isn't much evidence of that either. So our main takeaway is that uh, share buybacks don't create or destroy a lot of wealth. So then you might wonder, well, then why do why are companies uh, repurchasing, as you just showed, more than uh, on, on track for more than a trillion dollars this year? And uh, the benefits seem to be uh, a, an opportunity for management to signal that they believe the stock is undervalued. Your previous guest, uh, Chris, brought that one up. Uh, of course, Repurchases have more flexibility than dividends. They're easier to temporarily cut during a downtime. Uh, repurchasing shares uh, reduces the amount of cash that could be misused on management's pet projects. And finally, the managers uh, and, and others, the board, for example, can use the repurchase shares to compensate employees. So those seem to be the benefits as opposed to uh, improving long-term profitability or creating additional investment opportunities or anything like that. Interesting. That's really interesting and sort of uh, counter to the conventional wisdom, it would seem, um, around buybacks. Um, one of the reasons that they've been under more scrutiny recently is, of course, that the Biden administration has proposed an increase in taxes on dividends mm -hmm to 4%. Do we have any sense of what kind of effect that could have? Uh, well, and, and, and this is where we get more into conjecture because we haven't had a, a long enough and a long enough time period to collect data or see the effects of the current 1% even. And then of course the 4% proposal is, is a hypothetical. So uh, because it's, it's just 1% and those benefits of buyback seems so strong for so many firms. Uh, that 1% tax that we have currently, we don't think is likely uh, to dissuade most firms from buying back their shares, nor is it likely to raise a significant amount of revenue for the government. However, if those, if the disincentives increase, for example, if we get this 4% tax or other uh, limits on what managers can do in terms of selling their own shares after the company uh, has bought back shares and, and other potential restrictions, then some firms might decide to retain the cash instead or switch to dividends, which both could have negative consequences. For example, dividends, as we know, are taxed at uh, uh, income tax. They're taxed as uh, income, whereas uh, repurchases typically generate a capital gain. So that could create some additional costs from, for shareholders. Uh, of course, if the firms decide to retain the cash, 
then uh, that's more of available for the executives to misuse on pet projects or value destroying mergers and acquisitions. And things like a value destroying merger and acquisition could hurt employees who often get laid off or misallocated in such transactions. So currently, it, it doesn't seem like the 1% will have much of an effect, but their uh, increasing taxes or restrictions uh, definitely could uh, cause some changing behavior at companies. Yeah, unintended consequences. But the 4% doesn't seem like it's getting much traction at the moment. We'll talk to you again if it changes. Thanks so much. Cornell University Assistant Professor Nick Guest, appreciate it.